Well, guys, cheers. Welcome. And big, big, huge welcome to our man of the hour, Roberto Echeverria, who's the winemaker and third generation winemaker of uh, Vina Echeverria in Chile. Thank you, Roberto. Would you like to say a quick hello to everybody? Uh, hello to everybody. <laughs> hello to everybody. Very quick. <laughs> hello to everybody. <laughs> We're gonna make him talk all night, so we'll, just, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Uh, also, obviously, Leslie's here, the community manager for Spin Social, and my sideshow Bob Brian over here. Keep Hi! Saying, <laughs> keep seeing <laughs> um, um, uh, Leslie, I think mentioned this before, but if you haven't already, there's a poll to start the, yeah, or more, definitely. There's a poll to kick us off. We're just curious uh, if everyone's drinking this same wine with us. If not, we want to know what you are drinking. We can talk about that a little bit um, as we go. And um, in Vin Social fashion, we have to start this with the toast. Yes, especially with the given uh, the, the best guest possible. So right? everyone ready? Oh, thank okay. you. Go for it. Folks, let's raise our glasses. Yeah. All right. Here, this is our toast. This is our toast of reverence. Okay. Cheers to the makers the risk takers, the doers, the ones who aren't afraid to get their hands dirty, those who strive on creating something of purpose, something that will stand the test of time. We see you, we celebrate you, and we raise our glasses to you. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Cheers. 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 And we have one additional toast to do. Uh, our One of our members, Elena, she and her fiance James just got engaged, so we got to do a special shout out to them. We're so happy for you guys yes. here, and thank yes. you for being here. Yes, so you're here to your all your future adventures, many of which will be within social, right? That's right. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers. Drink to you, right? Cheers. All right, let's let's get into this. We're can you throw up the first uh, slide for me? You got it. All right, peeps, we're going back to Chile, as you know, and we're traveling south. So we are now in the Central Valley, specifically in the Valle de Curaçao. Is that, am I saying it right, Roberto? Curaçao. Uh, Curicó, Curicó. Curicó. I thought so. I was going to guess that. Yep, that's me. <laughs> Curicó. So we're in the, the purple section of the map, right in the center, and this is really the epicenter of wine production for Chile, where the most volume of wine is made, correct? Uh, it's correct. really, as with most of Chile, I always say Chile is like the Eat Garden of Eden or the Shangri-La, just such a happy place for vines where they really thrive. They've got a beautiful climate uh, and beautiful terroir, and it allows you to grow quite, quite a diverse range of varieties. Am I right? Yeah. Good. <laughs> At least that's my experience. It, amazing. I can't wait to come uh, all crash on your couch soon and, and taste wine with you in Chile. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So <laughs> Roberto kindly pre-recorded yeah. a really awesome video for us from the vineyard to kind of get a peek at where we're going. So we thought we'd roll that first uh, and then afterwards kind of roll into the conversation for the evening. You guys, as we're um, watching the video, go ahead and start throwing your questions into the chat box for Roberto and Leslie and I will you know, make sure everyone's questions get answered because he's got a great uh, family history to talk about, um, not to mention his own sort of history in, in winemaking and sort of the evolution he's taking his family's business. So. We'll, he'll touch on a lot of it in the video, so let's rock and roll. Make sure you drink during it. It's fun. Of course, we're drinking. We're always <laughs> drinking. This is how it works. <laughs> Hi, Love the t-shirt. There how are you are. So here we are uh, in Chile. Here we are um, uh, in Chile. Uncorking um, today this Chardonnay, Nois Pituco, Natural Wine. Um, we are here, um, uh, we are here uh, Roberto Chiria. 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 Victor Rivera, winemakers here in the Chiria Winery um, here in Chile. We're in the winemaker's paradise, here in the Curicó region, with the great advantage of where we are here now is this great diversity for crafting red wine and white wine. Very fresh acidity for the white, but also the reds get a great maturity and a great structure at the moment we harvest. So after seeing that, both. This what gives us this natural wine within our Tell me a little bit about the natural wines, Victor. So natural, oh, natural wines, wine, uh, 
biggest the difference biggest between difference the traditional between the wines are that you have the less intervention possible to the wine. So we recycle the grape from the vineyard and we just press it and we end at end time the wine so the, uh, we didn't clarificate we didn't filter the wine so we only added our law perfect so basically it's going back to basics and the philosophy is here to have something less in intervention possible uh, harvested pressed fermented and as quick as possible into the bottle and to be enjoyed the wine has a sediment in the bottle as you will see we always try to shake it even before we serve it chilled is the best and obviously the sediments add the structure and the volume and this is kind of going back to uh, how wines were made uh, in the old old times so let's make a like a quick taste of the wine yes. uh, before taste uh, roberto i have a question uh, what about the name what is the meaning of nospituco well the idea of nospituco was to show something also very simple and comes from the chilean slang that it ain't fancy so nospituco it ain't fancy shows that the wine it doesn't want to be something fancy, it just wants to be something that you can enjoy, drink and have a nice experience with a glass of wine. Oh, very interesting. Huh? So let's go to uh, Denver because we yeah. are speaking. It's a sunny day here and obviously uh, that's a characteristic of this region that even in May we can have nice weather conditions. Nice little glass of wine, sediment and cloudiness, great part of this wine as well that gives volume and character to the to the mouthful aspect. It's a lot of banana and pineapple, for Roberto. Mm. Definitely, you feel that. And the mouth is, is rich, it's intense, has, I guess, a lot of, of the variety. Again, this wine is like taking the wine out of the tank after its fermentation and just uh, putting it in a bottle and drinking it as uh, quick as possible. As we put in the back label, don't wait too long, not more than five minutes since you open the bottle. I think that I can drink less than five minutes. <laughs> well, that's what we expect you guys also to, to enjoy. So for us, thanks for being here with us. Uh, Vin Social, uh, please come and visit us here in Chile and enjoy this beautiful weather and taste the wine from the tank and you'll see that what we're saying is almost the same. So, gracias Victor. Thanks Vin Social and all everybody in the community. Enjoy Nos Pituco. Ciao. Oh. What's your favorite uh, superhero? My favorite superhero? Spiderman? Spiderman. 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 I was Batman, Batman so, uh, well, we're in, we are in the same comics. comics. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Embarrassing. Hilarious. Well done. I loved it. Oh, my gosh. So great. You guys are hilarious. Quite the duo. You guys are like Batman and Spider-Man. It's perfect. You're Batman, the, the superhero, superheroes of Chilean natural wine. I love it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Well, cheers. Thank you for that. I thought that, that was just a great, quick, you know, high level. And I, I think it's perfect, right? And the wine is so fun. I mean, who is not loving this wine? How can you not love a wine that A, looks this awesome and fun, right? Yeah, at, Leslie just put up a poll. Have you had a natural wine before? Curious to know. Um, let's see what everyone's saying. Um, but Roberto also just told me as we were sort of gearing up backstage, if you will, that his wife, uh, his you know life partner, business partner, she designed the label because she's a marketer, and she was like, "We have to make this fun." And I, I mean, it com completely comes across. I even love. I love the back label. It's it's just so fun. I mean, it's one of those wines you you look at and you're like, "I gotta have this. I want to see what what this yeah. is all." About. We had uh, one of our members actually said. Because the color with the glass and the cloudiness, he was like, it looks like Mountain Dew. <laughs> you know? <laughs> anyway, I, I love that. And um, let's uh, switch to this. So I love this. This is you and your dad, right? This. Yeah. Papa. <laughs> Papa, the man who handed the reins to you, right? Um, is he still involved or is he hopefully still with you? What? what well, totally with us. He's 81 years old and he's in lockdown for like two months ago. So he doesn't go out of his house. He gets yeah. everything delivered, but yeah. he's in touch of everything. He loves everything. He's uh, passionate for all what we do. Uh, all of our wines with a label on and being in the markets is due to all his effort and his dedication. We were driven 
from his pa passion to follow him. That's what happened to me, my two sisters, and my younger brother. And and that's to come maybe for the next generation as well. Uh, he loves wine. He loves his Chardonnay. So he Ooh. enjoys his uh, Pituco because uh, unwooded Chardonnay is the wine that he most drinks all the time. Um, that's his unique wine for beef, for salad, for cheese, for uh, fish. <laughs> on its own, from the bottle, like ass, like anyway. Goes with everything, right? Awesome. Well, I'm so happy that he's still with us and he's staying safe. Yeah, that's know. that's always a dangerous question. How's your girlfriend doing? <laughs> well, I'm like, how's your dad? Should have had this oh, conversation before, okay. right? Yeah. <laughs> that could have been yeah. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that been a blooper reel. Yeah, we did well. We're, we're lucky. Bing! Yeah, very true. Yes, James, uh, Elena says, James says that Roberto's father has good taste in wine. I agree. Yeah. Right? And nothing like having someone you know so influential in your life to not only kind of pay for you a career path but also kind of be a role model yeah. like that I mean I always say I if I could not I have amazing parents who are wonderfully supportive and and awesome but if I could change one thing it might have been to be born into a winemaking family I don't know <laughs> anyone uh, <laughs> she's she's been adopted by many since then so That's she's right. made up for it I'm making my own I'm forcing adoption on a lot of people uh <laughs> anyways I love that I love that you know you guys have such a beautiful I love the family crest that you have too of your brand and it's just it's yeah. so cool, yeah right keeps the tradition in there no. So, Roberto, what, what's what's one thing your father uh, gave you the inside track, like something that only he says that makes so much sense for for what you do now? Like when you first got started, like just just basically like dads always have those blunt insights that basically you're yeah. like, my dad. I think it's what, what he always tells us, you know, in, in bad times or, or or more weak times when we're with depressed, it's like never give up. It's like his very easy sentence. Never give up. Uh, we're a very small winery, family, 100% uh, brand controlled, but wow. we are probably one of the prestigious wineries in, in many places around the world. Uh, uh, and that is because we, we, we persevere with our, with our love, with our passion, uh, despite competition, despite uh, um, corporative uh, needs and, and, and the push of the world. And that's why probably this natural wines for me and, and, and for my team is something that puts us back like our heart in the winemaking towards what really is what we love. I mean, doing all this, it's really, how you say, it's like when you feel fulfilled in a way. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, honestly, it's, it's, when I heard that it was a Chardonnay, you know, naturally the, this is a brand buster, right? So you think Chardonnay, <laughs> And this thing is yeah. this is this is straight wild child. This is not, but it still yeah. has the, the structure of a Chardonnay, which is really really awesome because that just goes to show like you have, you know, finesse to the to the crazy. So it's mm -hmm. like almost like, you know, uh, yeah. the wild animal's been house trained in some sense. Yeah, and, and I was I don't I don't know if I, we're being lucky, but obviously the, the 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 wine itself has always shown clean and very straightforward, and it feels like. Just taken out of the tank, and that's what the, was how it was born in a way. When when uh, our friends from Tierra were, were here in the winery, they tasted the wine and said, "Roberto, bottle this." I said, "I can't bottle that. It's no sulfite. It's no uh, enzymes. It's like no, that's not wine." And and after two years trying the wine, bottle a, a batch and keep it in the car for three weeks and and drink it with friends, taking it uh, undercover, you know, like a spy to a tasting and okay. and trying it. I, I realized that, that I was wrong with that kind of paradigm that we have in, in winemaking. Uh, when we studied winemaking 30 years ago, this was the anti-wine. Mm -hmm. The wine had to be filtered, the wine had to have yeast, the wine had to be fine, the wine had to um, not have sediments. If it had sediments, it's, it's faulty. Uh, and you realize that there's a, a, a big opening door in the world, and I'm being, I've been very surprised in many markets that they there's a... Uh, a passage in every country that wants wines that are this style and 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 you know that they're less picky and they understand that it has sediments they're not going to complain they're just going to enjoy the sediment and yeah. and if the more the sediments the more they enjoy the last drop of the bottle in a way so I, I couldn't um, agree more. this is a bridge for those that love ipas in beer as well yeah. as sours to basically actually get into wine because this exactly. is yeah. This is so good. I mean, it might, totally. 
what I loved about this wine when I first tasted it with T. Edward was that, you know, I'm always, when I was, you know, when I'm curating the wine for the club, I'm always thinking about, about well, if I can't be there personally to really explain this wine, you know, there's could be a problem, right? So there is people that haven't had a natural wine before and would maybe open this and freak out like, why is it cloudy? It must be something must have gone wrong, I, you know, and you don't yeah. want to create like a customer service nightmare of like returning yeah. wine, people calling me like, there's something wrong with the wine. So, but then, you know, I tasted it and I was like, you know, there are a lot of, like the spectrum of natural, natural wine is wide. And I've had a lot of really, quite frankly, poorly made natural wines. I think it takes such an extra skill too. And obviously a lot of um, meticulous attention in the vineyard, right? To make a really great natural wine because it's almost like there is no makeup, there is no tinkering, right? To cover up flaws or, or, or poor quality fruit. It really is just, it's all gonna be, you're, you're gonna bear yourself naked in the bottle. And when I tasted this wine, I was like, holy smoke. This wine is so fresh. I get really the 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 way it looks belies belies the way it tastes. It's very mm. fresh. It doesn't have that like funky yeasty thing that a lot of natural wines have. I mean, it has a little bit of it, which I think adds character. But more yeah. than anything, it adds that textural dynamic. It, it makes the wine have this really beautiful sort of voluptuous mouthfeel and um you know you just you taste a lot more uh complexity there's so much going on right this is a wine taster's dream like you basically <laughs> shouldn't look at this you shouldn't do anything like mm. you said right it, i think everyone is um we're, we're, we're definitely going to overcompensate to make sure that this is pe this is something that people actually try before they, they they view but i again the bottle does it justice obviously so so i was looking back at the poll have you had a natural wine before so 71 percent said yes and 14 percent said no two percent said not or 14 percent not sure so a lot of people have which is awesome so you know it's yeah. like you said i think it's becoming more and more the norm and part of the conversation set in wine um and i am always intrigued by by natural wines and and a lot of my um you know, my value set around how wine, around winemaking and farming practices really veer on the natural end. Um, so I thought it would be an interesting for you to maybe talk a little bit about what you consider a natural wine, because one thing that's certain is there isn't really any set of defining criteria out there in the industry to say, well, this is what a natural wine is. I will say what's interesting is France did just announce that they did, the government finally did pass um, a sort of uh, certification or uh, labeling criteria to put uh, mm -hmm. wine as natural in France because they've really yeah. kind of been the ones that are heavily lobbying this um, from a certification standpoint. But the rest of the world is still the wild, wild west in terms of what you would call natural wine. But um, I, I went on to rawwine.com, which was one of the proponents of this type of wine out there in the market. And this was their criteria set that I have on the screen. Yeah. Um, that it's you know farming practice begins with farming practices right so it's really about uh, eliminating chemicals and pesticides in the vineyard and then basically doing as little as possible to the wine in terms of intervention or additives in the winemaking process and then same thing like not stripping things away post fermentation with fining and filtering um so what, I mean, what do you, do you have any sort of like in-house criteria from Echeveria in terms of, or is it just sort of experimental still? And everyone signs an NDA before they get on here. So we're not <laughs> going to share shit, man. Just give us your soul here. Let's go. Well, when we, when we talked with Victor and we, we were doing this kind of natural wine that we were kind of asked for some customers or we saw it in the market. At that time, every natural wine that I tasted, I felt them really raw, like a, sometimes of putting aromas, a little bit like very sour, like the, some of the Spanish, which were really full body, but they were kind of maybe not the wine that I would want to drink. So that's why I was skeptical to kind of go for it. But uh, when we tasted the wine in the tank and the Edward friends taste the wine and said, we want this, just bottle it now. It's like, okay, but let me try some wine, let me see it. Let me see how it evolves and and it might develop some funkiness and said no it don't matter it's part of the character okay so we that gave us a little more confidence you know it's like when you tell a kid yeah cross 
the bridge, if you fall, it's okay. Well, we have that kind of guidance. Like if we fall, it's okay. So basically our guidance for us was just not to add anything, not to do anything to the wine, less intervention possible. Of course, I need to press it. I need to move it from one tank to another to make the fermentation, but uh, not add anything as any other traditional wine. So no yeast, no enzymes, no sulfites at any stage. I know that some natural wines, there's a, a possibility of adding some sulfites in the bottling line. In this case, I wanted to go raw, so really to the extreme. So there's no, no sulfite added. Of course, if I make an analysis, the wine has sulfites because they naturally occur because of the fermentation of the natural yeast. Yep. But that makes it kind of a part of it. No, no filtering, no stabilization. Uh, we leave naturally the wine to have its malolactic fermentation that gives the buttery, the structure, and and yeah. and, and the pleasantness to the wine. Uh, and then just when it, when the wine is ready, shake the tank. Not well, not really shake it, but <laughs> move it around so all the sediments are are uh, in in the whole wine. And then we bottle, and we don't filter. We just use a little uh, some tights, not my wife's, but some tights, you know, and we put them in. In the oh, house, like house? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Like so, just to <laughs> avoid any, any kind of, I don't know, Dunks? spider or or a bee or, or a fly <laughs> going into the bottle. That's very nice. That's but, very kind of you. Thank you. No, you actually, yeah. <laughs> but if you find a bee or a fly, well, it's part of the nature. So just put it aside. Uh, probably if you drink it or you you bite it or you uh, munch it, it's just. Uh, in a natural what was the first what was the first vintage of this like what what was what year was that when Tanward was tasting it out of the tank and you decided to go for it yeah we started thinking about it 2017 okay. but 2018 is the first harvest that i bottled so okay. 17 basically was taking samples to to wine show wine events and just the little bottles you know cloudy and like everybody saying what do you have behind the desk well that was the first stage, but the first bottling was just Chardonnay in 2018. Uh, but my clever winemaker, Victor, and he knows that I know, but he always leaves uh, barrels behind with the wine. So that's why we created the next year, this like aged one, you know? Yeah. Okay. So this one is fancy because it's aged for 15 months. And that's basically, I said to Victor, Victor, for any chance, did you have any barrels of that natural Chardonnay 18? He said, of course, Roberto, I have some barrels. So, yeah, uh, we, we got only with very limited production of those barrels, but that gives us the the abil ability to start creating new wines, and new blends, and, 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 and be creative in that direction in a way. I love it. It's, it's the think tank. It's the, the test kitchen, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that creates brilliance. Yeah, it's it, it's fun to take credit for the accidental uh, genius, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, it's like not to my, my dad. He he understands perfectly well now, and he's like, ah, oh, I love what you're doing, and this is great that you follow that path. And but probably ten years ago, he would have said, oh no, that's not going to be that's not going to be happening. So yeah. uh, he he approves what we're doing now, and. That's great. Good. Did you find? Any, did you have a lot of pushback in the beginning from the family, and when you were considering this project? Uh, not really, but uh, uh, probably Francisco, my guy that's listening here, uh, he probably said, "Oh no, I'm not sure about that." But Francisco, you can chat in and tell us what you really think. Yeah, <laughs> now, he's, totally, he's totally convinced about it, so he's. 100 uh, maybe too much on board now like say okay when is the new one when is the next one when is the next one it's right like, oh there we have it we have it in print yeah. he is right how yeah. often do you do that <laughs> <laughs> awesome yeah, so mindy mindy asked will this become a yearly production then so obviously yes like this line of wines is essentially rounding out and becoming a, a an actual focal point for the echeveria brand correct yeah yeah totally in yeah. fact we were called yesterday from uh uh, distribu not distributor, but a, a chain of, of, not a chain also, it's like a customer that has specialized wine stores in Manitoba, Canada. And she said, I want your Nospituco that I tried in New York. Where can I get it? How can I get it and distribute it here in Manitoba, Canada? So we said, oops, okay. Good That's to know. 
biggest market. Manitoba yeah. keeps us alive. Hey, so, we, yes. we, we, have, we have a Canadian online with us right now, right? Lee, shout out. Yeah. Yeah, Lee. <laughs> She's so, hey, I want to throw it back. Mindy had a question a while ago, but um, okay. she said, so Roberto, you're a third generation. Uh, winemaker. So what changes have you seen at your winery or in the wine industry in Chile over your time there? Yeah, I think um, Great question. It's, it's all this change to going to more natural and less intervention. Because Chile by itself is a very organic and isolated country. We always call it the winemaker's paradise because whatever you plant and wherever you plant it, it grows and it gives you great fruit, great character, and and it's amazing just how easy it can be to make wine. So basically, uh, not adding yeasts, not having to filter, not having to do anything to the wine is the great change that I guess is happening in Chile a lot, much more than probably 10 years ago, and is around the world. And I guess many customers around the world and drinkers and people that enjoy uh, want that, want that natural, you know, vegan, vegetarian, uh, and it's, I think it's gone beyond the fact that before it was just organic. I want something organic wine. And maybe organic wine is, is a category. You need to be certified. It's a structure. But here, natural wine for us, and you were saying about the French, is what we believe is, is, is natural. Um, and you have to stick to your philosophy. And for me, natural is, in a way, not adding anything. And, and it, can, it can go faulty. It's a risk. You know, and you can get a bottle if you didn't take care of the bottle, like you take care of milk or butter, mm -hmm. uh, it can go wrong. So uh, if you leave it in the trunk of the car for a week, well, sorry, it's not, you can't control that. So basically, it's going back to normal, going back to basics, having wines that are very natural and drink them young. Why, why do I need to have a wine in the cellar for four years? Yeah. yeah. If, if the yeah. wine can be enjoyed now. So that's the, that's the key of all these wines now to make them young, to make them fresh, uh, to feel the fruit, and the fruit goes straight to, to everybody around, hopefully, the world. So that's the change. Yeah, yeah. That's today, exactly how it That was my criteria whenever I first started dating Sarah. Uh, you, yeah. you listed it perfectly. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not saying <laughs> um, Yeah, you know, I think it's, it's such an exciting time um, with this sort of quote unquote movement, if you want to call it that, but it's, I think the consumers are just becoming so much more educated and conscious consumers, right? Like I always tell people, cause I, I, I educate all the time on wine and, and, you know, been social stance is really about supporting the small producers and especially those who have a strong point of view with them, you know, uh, sustainable farming, sustainable organic or biodynamic farming practices, and also minimal intervention in the winery. And I've noticed just in the last like two years, how many more people have um, become aware of sort of the different categories of wine. Whereas before, I think everyone just presumed, well, wine, isn't it just natural inherently, right? And I think you know, now people are really understanding that you know, there is a huge spectrum of how wine is made and can be made. And I think it has to be stated to state the obvious, but like it's nearly impossible to create wine like this at a large scale, right? Because mm. as you mentioned, there's huge risk involved, right? So like yeah. if you have, especially if you're a high volume, like, you know, large producer of wine, you you have a lot of capital on the line A, and um, you know you you have this sort of standard from your customers of like this consistency of quality, and that just it seems like the complete sort of in contradiction to what this is, which is, you know, we can't really say what it's going to do in a year, you know, and, and and because it it doesn't have sulfur, like if it isn't handled properly, it could potentially go bad. So, I think it's I admire those like yourself who are up for the risk for the sake of sort of your ethical stance and, you know, mm -hmm. wanting to do it a certain way and maintaining sort of the small and beautiful aspect of your brand versus doing what a lot of other people do, which is, you know, as big as we can be, but you lose so much of the heart and soul and, and the ability to do something like this at, at a large scale. Am I right? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. That's why the only way to grow is to be creative in, in things that are not 
in, in the same moment. So I, I can't do much more Chardonnay because it's harvested at the same time, harvested at the same moment, but I can do more Cap Franc. That's why when the first year we just did Chardonnay, but the second year I did some Viognier, which is harvested at a different time. So I could do one and then do the other one. And then I went for the red, think, thinking like, okay, which red do I have in the vineyard? Which one I can do? Which one I don't have it in the traditional range? So I just picked Cap Franc and, and, and to make it uh, natural uh, and fresh. And probably the first time we uh, get to the market a wine from the same year of the harvest. Normally we wait a year to, to deliver a wine. Uh, Cap Franc is like fermented uh, in, in, and probably six months later is, is, is the fermentation and the harvest, the wine can be in the market. So basically that's very raw, very straightforward. Uh, and it's a great view of, of tasting a, a red natural wine as well. Well, we, we have a, 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 a labeled dumb question from Chris Mitchell. If you bought all of this at one time and stored it, uh, would it still be good in two years? I've been drinking the 08, which is the first one we harvested, and it's great. Okay. So I, I can't really like... Uh, the 18th or the 08? You know, but uh, if it's well kept and well taken care of, of course, it should taste fine. Um, wow. And I've been kind of surprised with that because obviously I thought, oh, it's not going to last yeah. long. It's not going to be the problem. But it, it, it does last. And, I, and I've tasted also wines, opening the bottle, leave it in the, in the kitchen for a week, and the wine doesn't go bad. So uh, it's luck or not luck, because obviously sometimes you have a wine that you open it, it goes bad after three days. So right. I think uh, it can. But my recommendation, obviously, is drink it soon, because the freshness and the structure of the wine is to be enjoyed uh, now. Uh, uh, there's no need of, of, of keeping it long. And, and in two more years, you'll have the next harvest I'll give you. So don't wait for those. Don't, don't. And it's so delicious, you can keep it in the cellar anyways, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, well, I think let's all kind of taste this wine together. Yes. And I'd love for us to just, you know, kind of walk through the, the, the tasting method that I, we're always practicing here, Roberto, um, you know, kind of how to professionally analyze a wine because it's something we all don't necessarily do sort of in our just day-to-day -day drinking, but it really, in this setting, especially when you're really wanting to get to know a wine a bit more intimately, like you really have to engage all the senses in. So I just, you know, we, we always just practice. So as you know, we start with sight. So clearly this wine has some, you know, some, it's not clear, right? Like a normal white wine, it's like glistening, sparkling, you know, yeah. either, or pale yellow. This has got, you know, it's cloudy and I think, you know, at first glance, you're like, hmm, I'm not sure about this. It looked like it does look like a hazy IPA, <laughs> but um, it's very yellow, right? And Chardonnay always kind of has a is more on the yellow camp from a color spectrum. Yeah. And then what I think is most uh, exciting about this wine is the nose, right? Like there is just so much going on. So I'd love Leslie has as usual uh, in the poll section. We'll talk about what you're smelling. We've queued you up with some things that we think might be in there. Yeah, what are you guys smelling? Like, obviously, collect and, and your thoughts, but definitely select the combination because I I'm getting salt, I'm getting yeast citrus, I'm definitely getting banana and pineapple, which is lots of tropical, lots of tropical, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's like what Victor said in the video. I mean, he the first thing he always says is banana, you banana. know, which is not normal. I mean, no. think about it. Like, I, I, I don't think I've ever come across where it's like, let me just tell you, it's banana peel. Like, there's no <laughs> banana ever in wine. Like, this is fascinating to me. It's not like synthetic kind of shitty banana. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Being the beer person that I am, it's like when you get a real nice cloudy, cloudy Hefeweizen and it's got that real punch of banana, that's what you're yeah. looking for. Yeah, this yeah. is like I said, this is this this is an onboarding to wine. Yeah, I think we can convert beer drinkers, like craft beer drinkers, on the wine via the Watch time. out, Denver. Watch out, Colorado. <laughs> Michael fully approved of this and he has been strictly drinking hazy IPAs lately. So yes. Michael approved. <laughs> yeah, I mean so good. I, honestly, like all the things, Leslie, that you put up in there, I, I get all of it. I think there's so much complexity on the nose. Reverse yeah. That's why we put it 
we put in the back label also for for to be to state that that part of the sediments you know it is yeah. likely to be cloudy and have sediments so we recommend that you don't wait too long and give the bottle a bit of a shake because mm -hmm. i think the sediments are part of the wine and and if you if you let, let the wine decant and not have the sediments in the glass and taste the one with the sediments you'll find a great difference yeah and when you go back to the sediments you'll say wow i want all my wines with sediments now Right. It adds a whole other dynamic layer, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you guys think? I, I thought this wine to me, it when I smelled it, it tastes, it smelled um it almost tastes a little different than it smells, not in a bad way, but like it's like a whole new experience when you put the wine in your mouth. Mm hmm mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love that we added on here cider because I've had some very funky like Age ciders and this immediately took me right back to that yeah i totally agree mm. it's got such great acidity too you know which sometimes you find from warmer climates like you're in a pretty warm climate but it's almost it's sometimes difficult to achieve that bright acidity do you do you harvest early uh, or like slightly unripe to retain acidity or just curious well, what that's a, a little uh, like a, a myth that we always think about Chile that it's warm, but yeah. Chile is considered to be a cool climate uh, country of winemaking oh. because we have the influence of the Pacific Ocean and the Humboldt Current mm -hmm. that keeps our cold very cold, and the rivers going into the mountain and the Andes Mountain keeps our our kind of weather conditions very cool at night and during the day they're they're very hot, but at night it's like sometimes 25, 30 degrees difference from the from the morning, I mean, from the day to the to the night. So basically the acidity is very natural to have very high acidity uh, wines, um, reds and, and whites. So that's one of the advantages that we never have to correct acidity or do anything with it because it's, it's super natural and it's there. We harvest normal time. Um, you don't harvest earlier uh, to have more acidity. It's just when the wine is, the grapes are, are, are ripe, the acidity and the sugar levels are, are in a very good balance. Yeah, it's delicious. I mean, it's it's interesting because it seems like Chile is just such a unique um, sort of geographical anomaly in general, right? Because you've yeah. got this protection on your eastern uh, boundary with the Andes and then you're so, it's such a skinny country that yeah. you're, no matter kind of where you are, you still aren't that far from the Pacific Ocean. Yeah. And yeah, like the Humboldt current, right? That comes up from Antarctica. So that's like bringing a lot of cool air up, right? And I guess all those east west valleys are just bringing in that ocean, cool ocean air across inland, right? So it's pretty cool. I'm, I've never been, but I can't tell you how much I am like dying and chomping at the bit to get to Chile as soon as we are allowed to travel again. Well, let's, let's actually take you there. I mean, uh, I, I, I'd love, you know, we started to put you on the spot, but we show up, what's the first thing we do? Give us a, a, a 30, uh, you what know. Is, yeah, what is, what would you, What? where would we eat? What are your, um, like, where do we eat? get the inside track on the stay? local experience, uh, top three things? Well, First of all, alcohol gel and a mask. <laughs> well, let's forget all that part. <laughs> okay. Uh, then <laughs> one, uh, a pretty nice place it was to stay nearby. Uh, if it's a small group, the house has six uh, old style bedrooms. If it's a bigger group, well, there's a boutique hotel uh, in town. There's a bigger, bigger, bigger group. Well, we'll find a place in tents to stay in the garden. Uh, and then inside, it just depends on the time. If it's a uh, harvest, obviously nobody can avoid to cut grapes or uh, select the, the the grains that go into the crusher. Uh, free labor, we're bringing you free labor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing like a free drink, so you have to work it. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, what is, so what is it, you know, you're in, you're near a, it's a town called Molina, right? Yeah. What, is it a really rural area or is it, is there any sort of, yeah? Cause you're like two and a half hours south from Santiago, right? So you're, yeah. you're in the country per se, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a town. I mean, 
uh, here in Chile, towns are very kind of separate to cities. Uh, you know, like in America and other con uh, developed countries, like a town has everything, the same thing, but smaller than a, a main city. So mm -hmm. here basically they have some things, but it's more basically rural. Uh, the fact that we're very close to Santiago, it's uh, the capital. We do our main things uh, out, out there. Uh, but you can find all your things you want to survive anyway. I, I mean, I've survived for two and a half months now here, so <laughs> we can survive. So it's possible. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, well, all the workers that, that work with us, you know, they, they live mostly in, in Molina, so it's long time working with them. Some of, some of them are like 40 years with us, some of them are 30, yeah. some of them are second generation of, of family okay. working with us. So it's a, is a long history of them also with us here, and and the fact of being with a small town also allows us to to in our sustainability uh, kind of uh, policies is that we are very involved with the community. So we're part of a excellence uh, school. So we, my dad is part of the board of director to guide them to 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 teach them to learn to learn about alcohol come to the winery when they're young so they know about uh, the wine process and, and, and wine making it's in their skin because I mean if you're in Chile you don't know about wine it's like yeah. you know, you're in, at Eskimo you don't know about ice so yeah. you, have to be, you have to be involved on what your country gives you and 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 that being part of the community is is, is very important and and the mayor mayor yeah the, yeah. the head of the community they always count on us they always come here and we're near the train station, so we we were very well, in a way, located and, and spotted. But we try to help them a lot, and because at the end they help us a lot as well. I love that. That's so. I mean, that's so amazing. This this community act, you know, activism is is yeah so special. Um, I wanted to uh, before I forget, I'm gonna just throw this into the chat box. We uh. We had a great write-up by uh, Be Latina, which is like an online publisher for Latina audiences, and Roberto was actually quoted in the article. Um, but I thought it was a, it was an, it just, it made me think of it. What you were just saying was like the importance, because the question from them was like, why, how do you see your business as being essential during this, you know, pandemic? And your answer was so poignant in that, well obviously not only for the sake of continuity of your own business, but it's also because you're so um, integral in the success of the community, right? So it's like you provide jobs and opportunities and things. So it's like, you know, that it, it just only makes sort of your mission even more important, if you will. But yeah. Yeah. it's such a great yeah. article. If any of you haven't read it, please check the link. I just yeah. that and read it later. It was so well written, set, really well said about been social but also a really great quote in there from roberto so yeah so, so how uh, winemaking around the at least i know from spain because i've got some friends there uh, and in chile wine making and wine industry was defined as essential so yeah. basically yeah. they have to keep them rolling and they support and they give us permission to move around from different communities the trucks and the grapes and the supplies and the people uh, because it's part of what uh, this country needs to keep on keep on moving in a way. Yeah, critical to the economy, right? And yeah, and critical that you keep making sure we get this wine next year, right? So. Well, that's my main target. I mean, you have to have wine, and like somebody that said, "How can I keep this wine two years?" And I said, "Don't keep it because I need to give you wine next year and two more years and so Better on." Better business model that way. That's why Chris <laughs> was wrong in his questioning, and he should be punished. By drinking a shitty Chardonnay instead of a good Chardonnay like yours. All right. Do you have a question? Yeah. <laughs> no, he accidentally raised his hand. But Mindy does have a good question. Yeah. So what do you hope to leave to the next Echeveria generation? Do you have kids? Uh, yeah, four, four kids. And I have to say that obviously being here for this last two months, because we all live in Santiago. Okay. I come to the winery always the whole time. And... In on the holidays, we all come here. They all accompany me and wife, kids. So they always are around everything. But I have to say that the two youngest, um, um, well, I have four. Probably the eldest he passed away last year. But 
that's not to put it aside, but he's the angel that keeps keeps us all moving. The third one, the second one, I mean, thanks. The second one, he doesn't get involved, but he's very clever and he said, Dad, the day I need to do something, I'll do it. But not now. Let me play Xbox and play with my friends. Don't I'll do it when I need to do it. And the two smaller ones, I have to say that Santi, the third, he's great with aromas and smells. He tastes every wine, he's 10. He doesn't drink them, but he tastes and he, he identifies all the aromas. He goes to the winery with me, gets the bottles in, and tries to get there a lot. And, and I think just by looking at you, they kind of want to do it or want to play with it. Maybe when he's 20, he's not going to be even interested, but it's up to him. When, when when the moment comes, the fourth, the only girl, uh, Romilly, she's really crazy, uh, and she drinks every because she's young. She sees as everybody, you know, drinking wine. She follows the model, so she looks at glass and has some wine, and she just drinks it. And the same with beer. And I, I know I shouldn't be saying all this. I might be cut off, you know, the internet. But uh, she's a little early taster and and i think in a way it's great because she'll be prepared for what comes in the future she's a great mm -hmm. taster she looks at colors and says oh dad this has sediments you didn't filter or and she's four and you get all that information so young uh, it's just great so we enjoy what we do and it's a family uh, thing at every time and they my, my kids might think that i'm always drunk because i always have a bottle with me and a glass of wine <laughs> but it's it's okay well, this is actually a recruiting platform. Uh, can we talk to your daughter? Uh, we'd like to, you know, get her signed up for Vin Social. We have a tasting uh, through to them. Yeah, uh, this is great. Thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. I mean, we have a two and a half year old uh, named Cora, and she is she's always watching what we're doing. Of course, you know, they're like little sponges at that age, of course. But <laughs> she's always wanting, "Mommy, can I smell?" And I, she, "Mommy, can I taste?" A lot of times, I'll, I'll like dip my finger in or let her take a small taste and. I mean, I think it's great. It's like she's learning an appreciation for a really important, obviously, part of our lives, but in art. And I, I let's you have a picture of her. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm going to try to play it. I'm not sure I'm going to work. But... Oh, that's great. <laughs> she spit. Look at so that. Learning oh. to spit, you know? So. That Amazing. Yeah, Cora's Cor like me. We don't spit anything. We we savor it all the way down. <laughs> don't call CPS anymore. Yeah, yeah. She's not, it's fine. like a. What a doll! Such That's a adorable. Yeah, so thank cute. you for sharing that. I mean, yeah. Uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> 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 oh, oh my gosh! That's right. right. It's a fake cigarette, you know the ones that have a little fake light in the in the in the tip, and uh, the wine is just water with a drop of you know that's uh, those added drops to add flavor. But she wanted to have her rosé wine too. Oh my god, that's so cute! That is hilarious, <laughs> adorable. Um, thank you for sharing that. She's so cute. <laughs> Amazing. Well, it was funny because Saturday Night Live this last week had this whole like commercial, like basically bit, this, yeah. this bit where it's like, let them have one drink. What? <laughs> they're going to drive? Like, they're so much easier. <laughs> let them have one drink. All right. <laughs> yeah, if you guys haven't watched that sketch, definitely do because it's hysterical. Shame on us for not having that queued up. Yeah, That's, we should have I'm had sorry. that. Oh, dang it. That's okay. Fine, it hurt. Yeah. Uh, I'll bring your email tomorrow. <laughs> Just send your kids, you know, when they grow up, and Romilly, Romilly will take care of, well, good care of them. Yeah, That's right. perfect. That's amazing. Um, so does anyone else have any other questions for Berto? It can be, you know, on topic, off topic uh, questions for us. Um, like, you know, there's no dumb questions, obviously. Um, this is your chance. Uh, hopefully, I mean, if you only have one bottle of this, you might want to think about getting more. I know we are. Um, we already discussed it this morning. <laughs> yeah, we discussed it this morning. We're like, should we split a case and get well, another? No, when I open this bottle, because sometimes they ask me, I don't take out the wax. I just put the cork through straight into the wax, you know, and then pull it out and comes, yeah. the, the, the wax cuts easily, very easily well. So 
it's very easy to to open yeah thank, exactly thank, you for, thank you for saying that I, I meant to mention that i yeah. usually send everyone a, a little cue on what to do with the wine about 30 minutes out and after i said that i was like shoot i should have mentioned you just go through the wax because i've seen people like try to hack away at it before yeah. um <laughs> right through it <laughs> very simply as i peeled off every bit i could lol <laughs> you know what whatever it's fine so yeah i sent you guys the link um should have just popped out for you uh it's in the wine shop on our website if you guys want more of these and yeah. we still have more of everything else too if you're jonesing on something else this yeah. one this one is um like with with our import partner uh, t edward that reps this wine in new york uh it is really limited because well it's small production to begin with but um it's yeah. also kind of a hot commodity in the new york market so we have i think I think only maybe like five cases still allocated mm -hmm. in social. So it's not a lot. So yeah. if you want, snap it up. Let's do it. Yeah. Enjoy it. Huh? Yes. Thank yeah. you. And uh, Mindy says, it's so fabulous to have the winemaker on this educational experience. Thank you, Roberto. You're welcome. I know it's, I mean, it Pleasure. really, it really makes, we do these every week, you know, with uh, the wines and sometimes we are fortunate enough to have the winemaker and sometimes, Brian and I have to fill the space with our antics. Well, sometimes I act like I'm Roberto, <laughs> and it's completely false yeah. information the entire time. Beard, throw some pop, pop and powder, you know, for the white. I'm noticing it. it's it's definitely a mantastic. I like uh, the man well, bun. Yeah. You gotta get the t-shirt, huh? Oh yeah, the t-shirt. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Yeah, yeah, we, we have to have that. Yeah, can we get some of those? Because I I would totally rock. Yeah. Them. We'll buy it. I, I wrote I wrote it down already. It's in the. Uh, next cargo. Perfect. All right, perfect. So can I have them? Okay. Nice. Well, this is All the right. same one with the video. It was pretty, pretty used. <laughs> Maybe not that one. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, if anyone else has any questions, thank you guys again for being here. We've uh, had an amazing time, Roberto. Thank you for taking the time to join us. Oh, I know pleasure. you're a busy so, guy. Um, it's so pleasure, cool. Pleasure. That you're joining us from Chile, like that's pretty remarkable. When you think about yeah. the time we're living in, that we can all be together in and everyone, seriously, anyone that is uh, competent in the social media uh, dark arts, let's give a shout out to oh, yeah. Roberto and his crew. Let's uh, put his uh, handle here. Let's make sure that uh, we don't talk about his daughter uh, smoking and drinking. But we, that's <laughs> our joke. Everyone else, speak to the fact that they they make an amazing Chardonnay. Let's not tell them it's natural. Then whenever they get it, they're like, what is this amazing uh, bottle of wine? But yeah, seriously, amazing. So in in, uh, in closing, we are uh, definitely going to bring in another uh, friend. Do you Are you familiar, I guess, familiar with Pedro uh, Parra, the Familia? Was that mm -hmm. no? Yeah. 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 Great, Great. So give us one insight on him. Like, we we got we to gotta, we gotta roast him a little bit. Uh, we didn't roast <laughs> you because... You you were too good to be roasted, but anything yeah. that I mean, me later. Yeah. Well, I I have been with him too many times, but I know that he's been uh, uh obviously the uh, pioneer in doing all this uh, real real things. You know, all what he's done with the país, with the Cinso, uh, and regions of Chile that were used to be not really taken care of. He's he's trusted them and he's worked them and he's kind of. Given the world, uh, in the essence, also what Chile can can be, a little mm. bit, with being the natural ones that we do, also follows yeah. that what he has put in 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 everybody's kind of uh, insight, you know. So he's a uh, passionate totally of, of what he's doing and and what he, re he gives to everybody. He he overflows, you know, what his feeling is, and yeah. you can you can see that he's doing that. So that's yeah. great. Huh? It's great to to move Chile into that direction, basically. Yeah, There's no doubt. I Cheers mean, you guys. We're, uh, we're very big fans of of Chile, even outside of the wine uh, category, just in general. Like a big group of my my team and I are obsessed with anything Patagonia, anything Chile. It's it's, fa yeah. it's fascinating when you think about like the perfect bite of of everything you could possibly ask for: ocean, uh, mountains. Desert. Uh, desert. I mean, like it, it's it's obscene that most people don't know about it, but at the same time, too, I'm very happy they they don't and they can find out through us. And we'll start yeah. with 
it's, it's a trip coming. Trip the Vin social trip to Chile. You know? It's happening. I mean, you know, it's if we allowed to. had we not had the coronavirus, we would already be there. <laughs> because yeah. the first, well, a huge part of Vin social membership is traveling and, and having the opportunity to go and really meet people like yourself, yeah. and see the wineries and, and the vineyards in real life. And we'll get back there. I, I certainly yeah. sure hope so. Um, because it's really what drives me for sure. Is, ability to travel the world through wine so thank you again yes thank you to everybody that was here so tonight. Just, just a little taste of this was coming we just bottled today with victor our, our pet nut oh, oh pet nut. all pet right nut. Oh, love the so pet nut i'm gonna finish the fermentation maybe in a week so we'll see what comes uh, next okay awesome. so thank you very much Keep for fun. everybody huh? you yeah all right and, guys no Remember, no espatuco. Remember, what's that mean? Wine, no espatuco. It ain't fancy. Just it drink fancy. it. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very All much. Right. Bye. 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 Hey, you be safe. Bye, Thanks, Roberto. Guys. Take See you guys soon, please. Huh? Thank you. Thanks to your team, too. Thank you. I will. Victor Francisco. <laughs> yeah. Bye, guys. Oh.